uh, of house music. 1543. Uh, let's go for a quick break before we chat to Fabubu. Fabulosity is in the building. For those who don't know who Fabulosity is, stick around. You'll find out when we return. There is nowhere to hide when Mamelodi Sundowns face Orlando Pirates in the second leg encounter of the MTN8. Who has the proper recipe to book a spot in the final? The black and white nation from Orlando or the yellow nation from Clurco? The Brazilians want to defend their title while Ezem Yamangengani just want to end the trophy drought. Do not miss out on the second leg of the MTN8 semi-final clash between Mamilori Sundowns and Orlando Pirates on Saturday, 22 October at 2.30pm on SABC1 and your favourite SABC radio station. Hashtag We Love It Here. Brought to you by SABC Sport. ordinary so why should your wedding be are you a unique and unconventional couple planning to get married in your own unique and bold way between now and december of 2022 if this sounds like you then married our way is looking for you be a part of our new and exciting wedding show and share your big day with the rest of south africa on sabc2 where you belong WhatsApp 060-834-2930. Get a comprehensive insurance quote from MyWay and get the widest cover for your car. You will automatically go into a weekly draw to win your share of 1 million rand in fuel vouchers. Visit myway.co.za and live your way. MyWay is a licensed, not life insurance FSP. T's and C's apply. Grahamstown, we got you covered on 100.0 FM. Feel good music. Yeah, it's Radio 2000. It's the Glen Zero Super Drive. It's a Friday. It's Fashionable Friday. We've got a guest in the studio, multi award winning fashion designer David Tlale, is showcasing his spring summer collection at Melrose Edge. And I've already been invited. Thank you very much. God bless you. <laughs> uh, it's happening in, in Johannesburg tomorrow evening. The Fosslora. I didn't know David was born in Fosloras. Everyone wants th- street cred, right? Fosloras. <laughs> but I was hey, born man, in Fosloras. What do you mean? Nothing says Fosloras about you, man. What do you mean? We're not out of Melville. Uh, out of Melville. <laughs> Hill, bro. <laughs> <Sis>. <laughs> So, man, c- congratulations. Good to see you. Haven't seen you in a yeah, long, long time. Yeah, good to time. see you. How are you doing? You right? I'm great. I'm great. No, fantastic. Yeah, I'm great. I still have a job. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> okay. So do you. I'm happy for you. Thank you very much. So, David, um, I'm told that you've just come back from showcasing at the Paris Fashion Week. How was the reception? Are you showcasing a similar collection tomorrow? And how was the food? Did lady? A baguette. <laughs> anyway. <Croissant. laughs> Paris was absolutely amazing. and uh, But we did a trade show. And then from there, we went to showcase at Portugal Fashion Week, which was last, last week, Thursday. And um, now the collection, I mean, obviously it was launched there. It's coming back home uh, for our customers, for our followers. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's I think it's a quite an exciting collection more than anything else. And it's good to be doing live shows again and in, in, in like in big numbers like we yeah. used to do before the pandemic. And yeah, I mean, um, <clears throat> did I eat the baguette? Yes, I did a lot of it. Mm. And uh, don't say, don't look at my, my tummy. No, no. I haven't no. been to gym. I'm not rude. <laughs> I'm not rude. Your eyes are rude. <laughs> <laughs> now I always say to people, if you go to a place, you know, that you've never been to or you don't always have a chance to go to, yeah. don't don't punish yourself. Yeah. You know, do what needs to be done. When you come back home, obviously we're used to pop, you can take a break from pop for six months. Exactly, and then you can deal with whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So um do you have a muse for this latest collection? And speaking about that, you've previously said your biggest muses are your late mother and yeah. Nelson Mandela. Yeah. Um, do, the current muse, uh, it still continues to be my mom yes. uh, because I'm still celebrating her, her life and mm. her entire being. Uh, I mean, there's no way I could delete um, 76 years with only three years. So there's still a long journey coming mm. and just like really celebrating the journey that I've taken with my mom. And then Nelson Mandela has been just like um, an inspiration to me yeah. because a simple man from Kunu, born like Islanlin, 
you know, didn't know that one day he'll become a global uh, icon. So yeah. my take is <clears throat> if he could be one, so I could follow his footsteps and just try. And every day, just make a difference. Every day, build the brand David Lally and, and see where he takes us. So how does holding, um, you know, um, um, a fashion showcase uh, such as uh, this one benefit benefit your brand? Um, most importantly is like literally showcasing our craftsmanship and also our latest collections to our customers. Yes, and yes. also making sure that the public at large actually gets to see it even on Instagram or on the other social media platforms that you're going to be using. And um, and also just pushing sales because it's very important. This is the most, I think, um, expensive marketing exercise we do as a business mm. because we don't do billboards or TV or anything, but fashion shows are the biggest that we do for us. And it goes a long way because this collection will live until the end of the summer because in, in one collection we have about... Um, three uh, presentations, uh, which is the early summer, mid-summer, and high summer, and then slowly we get into winter next year. So it's very important to communicate the whole story, to communicate the whole inspiration at the same time, and slowly people get like get excited, like, okay, I want that, I saw that. So it's purely driving sales more than anything else. So, I mean, you've driven this, um, uh, you know, David Lale brand for 20 years. Are you aware? Next year it's going to be twenty. Twenty years. Next year. I mean, how mu- you know how much has the brand grown? And did you even ever dream, you know, <laughs> that you know you'll still be around twenty years later? Because I mean, business crumbled within a year or yeah. two years. So I mean, it's very interesting that you asked me that. You know, in two thousand three, when I started the business, I went to intern with Julian from the boys. Yes. Um, and then I asked him like, so Julian. How how long does it take for you? Because that time I was like struggling big mm, time. Mm. And I'm like, when do you start making money? He goes, after 20 years, that's when you start seeing profits, especially in this industry. I was like, well, I don't have 20 years. He's like, well, if you want to be a brand that is solid, at least 20 years, then you start taking off. Lo and behold, almost 20 years, we still start, now we're starting to see um, the journey actually coming together, um, which leads to saying, Today, I'm still excited to wake up to work, to go to work and design and create these collections because now in, in 19 years, we have about three stores uh, in Johannesburg. Uh, we're supplying a store in Ghana. We're supplying a store in Kigali and also in Nigeria and in, in, in New York. And we are starting to do the business of fashion because um, <clears throat> our journey is very different from any other designer because I, I, I always say we must not try to compare Hori um, someone else has done it like this. He, mm-hmm. And when he's doing our journey, as da- the house journey. of David Lale is, yeah. has been like really God anointed, God appointed, and orchestrated. Because from 2003, winning the El New Talent led to being one of the d- four designers to showcase during Paris Fashion Week from the AFI, and then 2009 showcasing at New York Fashion Week, and then from there solidifying at New York Fashion Week for seven seasons has been like really, really great. And um, We've gone through the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm. Uh, we have scars for days. We can tell you how much we have gone through as a business. Days where we couldn't be able to pay our debt on time and stuff like that. Almost shut down. I don't know how many times we wanted to to file for bankru- bankruptcy. But the one thing that I know that every day I give the business one more day. And how has the brand grown is that today as the house of David Lally, we employ 48 people on a full-time basis. Um, this is including the stores. And also now we are saying we are focusing on the distribution channels to say we want to make sure that the product is available to people. Oh, and then one more store that we supply is Africa Arise, which is owned by Tula Cindy yes. in Senton City which is a fun, fantastic uh, model, which he's actually like built over years. And, and quietly, uh, right? Absolutely, quietly yeah. so. And it's like literally really growing and seeing how he's men- mentoring young designers and also established designers are actually selling through his platforms. Really, really amazing. And also knowing that, you know, in this fashion space, we, we, we cannot compete. There's over 57 million people in South Africa. It's a big cake. Just like hone your own, yeah. you know, lane 
have yeah. your customers, service them with excellence, and then and then grow. And not to worry about the neighbors. Absolutely. Not to worry about the neighbors. So if you just tuned in, this is the Glen Zito Super Drive. It's Radio 2000. It's Friday. It's Fashionable Fridays. Uh, we are chatting to uh, David Lale from the house of, of David, David Lale. Lale. He's just landed <laughs> from Paris. He's showcasing at Mel Rosage tomorrow <laughs> evening. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be dope. A reminder once again, I have been invited. It's official. So... Listen, um, are you planning any further brand extensions like venturing into sportswear? Yes, absolutely. I mean, our next uh, move is purely a diffusion line that includes sportswear because there's a huge movement of people taking care of themselves. Yeah. And uh, I mean, even our custom my customers, like, like David, when are you doing sportswear? Because we buy your clothes to go to work or events or get married, but... If we want to go to gym, I always have to wear the other brands. So, I mean, you look at the likes of Tebe Makuku has, got, has done it, and it's the only way to do it. And us, as well as David Lale, will be doing that. And uh, there's a f- beautiful diffusion line coming um, very soon, so just watch the space, which is much more um, affordable price points for, for everybody. And it's going to be, like, really, really amazing. Mm. Um, uh, some have called you, um, what do you call, a brand magnet. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I saw that. Uh, uh, this year, <laughs> you've collaborated with Avon SA, yes. Nescafe Gold. Love it. Do you consider yourself a brand magnet? And you know what goes into <coughs> into choosing the types of brands you associate with? Oh, but like, you just want money. Um, well, yes, it's important to to make money from the brands, but they are curated like very carefully because. Mm. Number one, I look at the collaboration with Avon South Africa. It's um, it's all about their values, what they stand for. Yes. Um, it's a direct sales business, and it's all about women and men selling products themselves yeah. and creating wealth for themselves. Beautiful stories of women that started selling um, Avon in the 80s. Later on, they build houses for themselves, taking kids to school. Mm. And that's what we believe in as as, a, as the house of David Lale, to touch and change people's lives. That leads to um, the intent by David Lale, that where we find young designers, train them and mentor them. And like we've got about five brands that are thriving in the country that actually were conceived just after the, the, the intent by David Lale. So we look at the Nescafe Gold. It's for what they stand for. We, we all grew up, Renoir, all the other products and yes. everything else. But now it's like we can show a bit of luxury. And um, there's many other collaborations that we are doing. And there are beautiful ones that are coming right now, which is absolutely fantastic. And um, yeah, let's see what happens. Let's talk about this um, a new uh, documentary about a fashion brand. She addresses uh, the relationship between uh, cheap clothing and the exploitation in the fast uh, fashion industry. Yeah. I mean, what is your take on uh, fast fashion and uh, its impact I- in in the industry? Because now I, l- I love clothes, yeah. right? There are other brands that really design beautiful things, yeah. but then you also find other brands that copy their style, which kind of pisses me off. Of course. Once in a while that, you know, here you are, you know, you have the nerve to steal someone else's idea. Yeah. And you making money out of it. We, you don't even credit them. You don't even give them a cent. Well, I mean, there's a lot of that happening right now globally, and uh, we've seen uh, some of the bigger um, chain stores doing mm. the same thing, we just copying horrible, eh? um, our local designers, mm. and uh, and also so many other aspects that are actually just will like just like really just push you up the wall, because as creatives we work so hard to yeah. find number one to even get inspiration takes days and months and to even develop a print or even mm. a, a knitwear. I'm going to speak the likes of Makosa. Yeah. How much time goes into just putting together just one knit. It's it's not like shake and bake. It's there. No. Uh, it's, it's a process from developing the graphics, developing the inspiration, and also just communicating the heritage that he has and someone just comes and knocks it off i it really really just makes me angry um fast fashion is great because it's um it's our bread and butter as as as, as brands but um there was one thing that i really do not understand when people start knocking off what we do and go produce it for cheap and then people's like oh i can get it for 300 instead of buying it for 6000 rand so uh, and also as people we need to get to a point where we also respect ourselves no, absolutely. to say here's a brand proudly made in south africa yeah. let me advocate for it and let me stand for it to say let me go spend that 6000 rand on a golfer instead of going to buy it back door in some 
dump for 300 rand and then you just like basically what you're saying is whatever we are doing as a creative industry let our doors be shut down and then you support the back door um industry and the funny thing is those who go to the back doors yeah. chances are you are even employing some of their relatives exactly they never think even about their it. kids they you know go to I mean? school because yeah. of their parents that we Absolutely. employ which Absolutely. is really really sad anyway do you have um any current initiatives that involve passing on the lessons you've learned to the next generation of creatives. Or? Yeah, I mean, um, as, as I said earlier, we have the program of Intern by David Lally, and which is coming back very soon, um, which next is year. going to be much bigger. Yes, absolutely next year. Mm. And uh, where it's going to be a much bigger platform and, and much bigger audience. And we just want to make sure that the legacy of the house of David Lally continues, uh, continues to grow. It's not only going to focus in just South Africa, we're going to focus in the continent at, at large, uh, because we believe as Africa, we we have so much talent that the world has not even tapped into it, like even 5% of what we can offer. Yes, we have the likes of Rich Mnisi, Tebo Makugu, David Lale, and uh, <clears throat> doing all these things globally. But there's much more other designers. And our mission and our vision as the House of David Lale is to say, let's unleash more designers and let's bring them forth to the global stage. Um, one example, we have a brand called Musso Maxwell. They've just won the Woolmark uh, Prize in London, which is a global prize and give them like international recognition, um, which is really, really great. And that's our focus more than anything else as a brand. Okay, quickly before we go to the news, yes. uh, you're known for your bold shows. Not, <laughs> Mpan- not Mpanzani, <laughs> not being bold, not B-O-L-D, yes. not Mpanzani. Take us through quickly you know, uh, through the show you're planning for tomorrow? So tomorrow the showcase is going to be one of my favorites and I've always been planning on it. We have the likes of Simpiwe Dana coming to perform. We have Hush South Africa. We have um, uh, Ntabi Seng Mutsepe and also Shengiwe Pearl coming to perform. So it's going to be music meets runway and it's going to be like absolutely beautiful because we are resuscitating the entire creative How industry. How many pieces are you showcasing? Uh, we're showcasing about uh, 65 looks is in it? total. So Women? For women only. Men and women. Oh, Ronaso. Yes, Rutenda. everybody. Okay. Do you want to come walk? No. Eh? No, no, I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm not ready to walk the wedding. Uh, no. And people who want to come to the show, please go to web tickets and buy the tickets. Absolutely fantastic. Yes. So we'll see you tomorrow at the, the venue. Eh? At the venue in Melrosach. M- Melrosach. Yes. Melrosach, right there on the freeway. Yeah. All the best for Bubu. I'll see you tomorrow. What time do we start? Uh, we start at 7 o'clock. Are there free drinks, food? I'm hungry. I'm well, I mean, we are in the precinct of Melrose Arch, okay, so, so if you are hungry, food. you can just buy something next door. I must buy myself food. Wow. I'll okay. give you water. No, water won't, won't fill me up. Thank you so much, <laughs> Fabulous City. <laughs> Thank we'll you, see you tomorrow. Thank you for having me. There you go, guys. That's uh, uh, David Lale from uh, the house of uh, David Lale. Thank you very much. It's 4 p.m. SABC News. Independent. Impartial. Thank you. In the news, today is a deadline for public participation in the Children's Amendment Bill and former Etekuni Municipality Ward Councillor killed. Good afternoon. I'm Evelyn Tongwani. Today is the deadline.